Hi everybody, I'm here tonight to talk about confirmation. I'm not a vet and no expert on anatomy, but my experience comes from a combination of showing at a high level, judging for, I would say, about 20 years, being an artist, which has me constantly looking at horses' confirmation as I paint them, definitely from the valuable knowledge passed down from my mum, Pat, who, as well as being a top-level judge, she was DC at Cleveland Pony Club for many years, and she's basically taught me so much. And finally, now the experience I have gained with racing, um, that's the breeding of the young stock that we have here, um, assessing and evaluating them and buying young horses at the sales, young horses, older horses, having to make quick decisions on horses when they're trotted up, the confirmation, the faults, and whether they'll stay sound for racing. There was an old saying that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and this is certainly true. From a judging point of view, judges in the show ring do have lots of different opinions. However, the basic confirmation rules should generally apply across almost all breeds, or certainly the type of horse or pony we are likely to be riding, buying and competing on. Breed type is different to confirmation. An individual breeds, such as the Dartmoor, the Shetland, the Irish Draft, they all have characteristics that stand them out from other breeds, but we should still see the same rules applying for confirmation. As a judge in the show ring, my preference may be slightly different to another judge. For example, let's have a look at judging a Connemara class. One judge may favour an old-fashioned heavier stamp of pony with more bone, doesn't particularly move that flashy, but really important to them will be keeping that old-fashioned pony type. Whereas another judge may forgive a pony with slightly less bone and appreciate the ath athleticism and the flashy movement and quality that they're showing as long as it still retained the Connemara characteristics. No two judges think exactly the same. And this is why we do see different results at the shows, even amongst the top combinations. Very occasionally, a true champion will stand out that almost everybody agrees on. And of course, it's these real champions that every showing person loves to find or breed. I think we'll look first at some examples of good confirmation and how to recognise it. I'm going to show you a picture start with of a Welsh Section B pony. He's a stallion. He was a champion of his, of his era and a regular at Horse of the Year show and Olympia under saddle and in hand. I want you to disregard for a second that he's a Welsh pony. He's displaying the correct confirmation we would look for in most ponies or horses. He's got an attractive head. It's neither too small nor too big. It, nor is it too dished or too Roman in appearance. He's got nice little neat ears. He's clean through his jawline. He's got a well set on neck with a really good length of rein and a sloping shoulder. He's deep through his girth. If you look where the girth area would go, he's lovely and deep, which people can call good heart room. He's got a good length to his body. He's neither too short nor too long. We always look to imagine a saddle on the back and making sure there's plenty of room for that saddle. But equally, we don't want to see too much length behind either. He's got really well muscled up hand quarters and a good set on tail. One of my um, pet hates is a, a tail that is too low set, which we often see with sort of crouchy hind quarters. But he's got a lovely set on tail, neither too high and not, not too low. Something else I like to see, he's got really strong forearms and good second thighs. He's got plenty of bone for his size, really nice short cannons, he's got well-defined hocks, and he's got flat, open knees. If you blew this pony up to 15 hands, 16 hands, or whatever height you wanted, you'd imagine he'd be a, an athletic performer in whatever job you wanted him to do.